Paper Doll. We're going to be looking at the studio version, the intro, verse, chorus, and solo, as well as the associated overdubs in the studio version and the panning. We have John Mayer's rhythm part on the left side and then the overdub guitar on the right. And we're going to be looking at the live on Letterman version, the complete live solo, live outro solo and ending, and we'll discuss the differences between the two. Let's get started. studio version is 77 beats per minute. It's played entirely with the thumb and fingers, although live you can see him with the pick stowed between his other fingers for other songs in the set. And it sounds something like this. That's it, and as you saw, nothing is played the same. It's a bit of a departure from some tutorials that will show you one way to play it. And just say repeat that throughout the entire piece and you'll be okay. Mayer plays every single measure like that differently. There's some 60 odd of them, not one is the same. So you want to develop an improv improvisational framework by which to play this part to give it the meat. Measure one slow sounds like this. a long note to finish off the measure. And I'm fretting with my thumb A10, then I'm uh, picking with my second finger here from B12 to B10. And then with my first finger I'm plucking the G12, and then I'm hitting the open A. This is a very subtle timekeeping note with my thumb before going into a series of two note chords which I pluck with my thumb and first finger. So that's uh, A10 and D10, pluck them together. Then I chime the open G with my second finger, back to that two note chord again. And then I, with my thumb I hit A10 by itself, and then end off with the first finger plucking D9. So one more time. That is a really good overview of the lick itself. They all start with some type of bass note at A10, and then some type of pull off. That open A is almost always there, and it's very subtle, like very quick, and it's just a timekeeping thing. And then these two note chords, there's a lot of variations on those. So, one more time, really slow, measure one. Then this is the only time that he starts with a single bass note at A10. After that, they're doubles or triples, so. And with the picking, the way I showed you a second ago, it's just as economical as you can make it. Have the fingers in where they're supposed to be, the thumb handling most of the bass notes handling, the second finger handling notes on the B string, first finger handling notes on the G, and then the same thing when you're on the fifth and fourth strings. I'm using my thumb and my first finger to do those two note chords and second finger to hit the open G's. Let's look at measure two. We have double pump here on the A10. So the one difference there is, like I mentioned, the double pump on the A10. And when we do the pull off now, we're going to add an open G string, make it a bit dirtier. So instead of, it sounds like this, we have the open A, and then the two note chord is similar, but we, we have the open G, and we end off with an open G string, and back to that D9. One more time, slow measure two. an example of the phrase where we end off with uh, quick notes at the end. The first measure we kind of hung on that last note, but the last one ends with a like that. Measure three sounds like this. Bit of an oddity. We have the double pump, we have the two string pull off, the open G, that open A again, 
the first of the two note chords on the 10th fret, open G. Then we have a single A10, and we have that chord where we have the A10 and the D9. We hang on that a long time, and then the open A is a pickup note into the next measure. So one more time, slow. Measure four, you have another double pump on the A10. This time it's a single, not, we don't have that open G sounding on the pull off. So we have B12, B10, G12, open A, and then we have that 10th fret 2 note chord, open G, back to the 10th fret chord, 2 note chord again, single A10. Then the uh, different chord shape with the D9 and A10, open G, and then open A. And this time we're into the singing part, and the one minor difference there is he really lightens up on those two note chords. So the singing part, measure five, sounds like this. So it's very light. So. Not a lot of this. So some of the variations are these these open parts, and then there's some of the busier parts, like, and some of the phrases end off with trailing notes before going right back into the lick. Others have these little pickups, like open strings, like an open A, open uh, G, or open D, open G, which we'll see later. So that is kind of a meat and potatoes of the small differences you'll see in the licks. Check the tab for the exact stuff. But when you go to play this yourself, you're going to want to handle it like this. when they're there and stay within the framework of the licks. After this, we're going to look at some of the specialty things that occur in the first and second measures. Sure was fun being good to you. Measures 10, 11, and 12 have some nice variations on the pull-off lick. That uh, sounds something like this. So what we're doing is we're doing, uh, instead of in measure 10 we're going, and that's really the only difference. So slow measure 10 is like this, double pump on A10, pull off from B12 to B10, back to B12, and then the lick plays out like we've heard it before, open A, 10-10 chord, open G, 10-10 chord again, single A10, and then the 10-9 chord falling off with an open G, open D. Moving on to measure 11, it sounds like this. Ending with a little percussive timekeeping thing. So we have the double pump on A10. We have a slide from B12 to B10 with the open G sounding as well. And then we pluck that open, sorry, we pluck that fretted B nine again. So it sounds like this. Like that. One more time. And it's a very open D10 to open G. D9. Like that. And then a small percussive thing. So one more time from the top and measure 11. And a small percussive sound on the fifth string. That's probably to get ready for measure 12. It sounds like this. A little note about measure 12. The variation is this. The tenth uh, B10 and the open G. And then you open G by itself. To my ears it sounds like he was trying to play this. Like that. Instead of the way it's noted, fits in line with the descending and the previous version of the lick, so uh, I'm probably going to play it like that. So let's go over lick 12 with that little substitution. Double pump on the A10. And we have 
B10 and the open G. And then you can either play this open G by itself, or like I do it, the G12. And then a 10-10 chord by itself, open G, and then a 10-9. Those are the variations. For some reason he doesn't throw them in live, but uh, they catch my ear enough that, that I'd do so if I was playing it like that. At this point it's probably a good idea to go over the overdubs that occur in the studio version. Now John Mayer's guitar part, or the main guitar part, for the rhythm and the chorus is panned hard left. It sounds like this. So if I go over to hard right now, I hear the overdub. It's just the first lick, and then held on the G12. So while guitar one is playing, guitar two is going and holding it. In verse two, the overdub lick changes a bit. That particular version has a little embellishment, but what he's doing is he's extending it. What we heard was this, sliding up from D10 to D12, back down to D9, but instead of going in the first verse overdub, the second verse overdub sounds like this, like that. Measures 13 and 14 are the first turnaround, and it sounds like this. Open E, measure 13, doing our familiar lick to our open A. Now, this part here, we don't have any open G's chiming all over the place like usual. It's all these two note chords. So it's 10 10, A 10, 10 10 again, A 10, and then 10 9, and then the open E. Okay. Like that. None of this open G chiming stuff. So from the top, that open E still ringing, we're going to fret an E8. And that's measure 14. One more time. What's happening there is we have a B7. We have a pull off from G9 to G7. We have D7. Pull off from D9 to D7. And then fretting with our pinky A10. So from the top, those two together. An interesting variation live on that part is instead of going live on Letterman goes. Sounds kind of neat. And then you go into the next. Verse. This mid green is new for spring. Some of the verse two variations can be found in measures 21, 22, and 23. Measures 21 starts off with a triple pump on the A10. So in measure 21, we have one, two, three, and then this timing variation on the B12 to B10, and then a G12. And then really quickly into the D10, open G, and then the 10, 9 chord, and an open G, open D. One more time. And then measure 22 also has a triple pump on the A10. But it has the more traditional pull-off look. But it ends with... Instead of uh, anything else, it's ending with an A10, two pumps on the A10. So it starts with three, one, two, three, and ends with two on the A10, which sets up measure 23 that starts with two pumps, and then your regular lick. Like that. 
that. So these are some of the variations. We're getting into the triple pumps and then ending off the phrase with two pumps and then starting the next one with two pumps as well. These are variations you can throw into your own playing. You can check the tab for the, for the details. 22 girls in one. The first studio chorus is a thing of weirdness. Also a source of great confusion for everybody. Basically we have these chords. B minor with a fifth in there, C6, D6, and an alternate version of a E minor. So the fretting for that first chord, the B minor seventh with the fifth, is basically a minor seventh chord. We throw the fifth on there on B. Eight. So we have our thumb on E7, first finger barring D7, G7, and B7, and then I have my first finger on B8, and we have a little pull off here in the playing of that. After that we have the C7, so I have my second finger on E8, first finger on D7, pinky on G9, and third finger on B8. After that we have a D6. Just slide that thing up two frets. So we have this. And then we have our modified E minor, which is basically the open E. And then I have my pinky barring B12, G12, and my first finger on D9. So the chords sound like that. The verse suffers from John Mayeritis, which is the, ability, the inability to be played in the same way twice at any given part in the song. So I'm going to show you how it sounds on the album, and then later on we can show how we can improvise it up a bit. So right off the top, measure 25 is the first measure of the chorus. Sounds like this slow. It involves the first two chords, the B minor 7 with the 5th and the C6. And we arpeggiate that first chord like this before going into the next chord. So for the arpeggio, I'm fretting the chord. I'm using my crossing over picking with my thumb, index, thumb, index. The index is actually brushing up at this point. And I'm starting a pull-off. Right as that pull-off part sounds, actually doing a slap flick. So there's a percussive slap and that B7 note sounds with my fingernail hitting it on the next finger. From the top slow, like that. After that I'm doing just in time fretting. My pinky is sneaking over to hit that G9. So one more time. My other fingers don't have time to fret the chord yet, but it's okay, because we have a rest now, so we can slide our fingers in where they need to go, and just in time for this chord snatch. And then with that chord formed, we're going to play it like this. We're going to hit the lowest part of it, the E8. We're going to go high to the G9. Slap. We're slapping on the E string, so we can immediately pluck that E8. And then we have this kind of rhythm. So the whole measure 25 is slow. Very weird, I know. One more time. So keep in mind the just in time fretting. Your pinky hits there. As the rest is happening, the song's going on, we have time to throw our fingers down here and here in time for the chord snatch. As your 26, having fretted the C6 chord, we just slide it up two frets. Sounds like this. So 
So slide that C6 up. Hit the lowest part of the C6 chord, the E10. Snatch the two middle strings, already fretting the G11 and the D9. Come down with a slap flick. That's where I slap with the thumb on the low E. And then my first finger is going to impact on a note or notes. In this case, it's the D9. Pinky sneaks up to G12. Then we pluck the G12 and the D9 together before doing this rhythm on the low E. Going back to those two middle strings and sliding out down. So slow measure 26. Measure 27 sounds like this. We're arpeggiating that early chord we're going back to again. This is very similar to measure 25, but we're adding an extra two string. We have a B7 and a G7. For going, forming that second chord and hitting the bass note like this. Two on the E8 for doing a slap. And then a D7, E8, and then the G9, sliding that up like that. Hit slap. So that is a very tricky rhythm. Let's look at it slow. One more time. Measure 28, sounds like this. So having slid up in the last measure, we're just play, basically doing a two-noter. The bass note on the E10, and then the high note on the G11. And that last bit is a two-noter on G12 and B12. So one more time. So with that second D6 formed, we're plucking the E10 and the G11, and then the E10 by itself, and then the B10 and the G11. Slap those same two notes again. B10, G11. A bit of a pause, and then this rhythm on the low E for doing a sliding two-noter from. B12 and G12. Finally, measures 29 and 30 to end off the first chorus. We're arpeggiating that first chord again. This time there's some really nice leading notes and then alternating between the low and high parts of the chord. end off that first measure 29. So one more time. The second part of that sounds like this. So you get into this kind of pattern. It's a nice leading and counterpoint thing. So one more time from the top, measure 29. We have a bit of a slide out. And measure 30, really nice. We're doing is we're forming this chord with our thumb we're on E10, third finger is on G12, and my first finger is actually barring G, G10 and B10. And we pluck the notes like this. We pluck the E10 and the G12, the E10 by itself, and then the two strings here, B10 and G12. Slap, same two notes again, and then we drop to G11, and then we pluck all those strings together. Now we arpeggiate it. So one more time, slow. So let's play those last two measures. Yeah, for some reason he does not throw that in live, and that's a beautiful part. And that is the first chorus. Let's look into 
improvising that up a bit. So as you can see, John Mayer never limits himself to playing the same thing twice. And although these basic foundation chords are the same, the notes that he's hitting and making come out are very different each and every pass. So what can we do to make ours sound different every pass? Well, you can loop the drum beat and just go for it. keep that last part because I like it. And the feel that I see him doing is kind of like slapping and this kind of rhythm-y thing with the thumb and first finger. Almost like... So this hand is... I'm going to turn the volume down. This hand is moving in this motion and we're doing the chord and then the thumb and the first finger are all alternating on some of the chord shapes. And moving up and down strings, so... And uh, that's a bit exaggerated, but that's kind of the feel you're going for. Also throwing in slaps on beats 2 and 4. And double slaps. Also, the slides are nice. Get some rhythm. So if you make the slides late, or early, can really change the feel of it. It's just something you're going to have to work with, I guess, to get a level of comfortableness with it. What I find amazing is he's singing when he's making this stuff up, pulling it out of his ass, so to speak. Amazing. Looking at some of the chorus overdubs, we have this. With some interesting placed rhythms as the chorus is going on. That's pretty much it. Let's just listen to it in context with the right side overdub track. I saw it. First one. And that's pretty much it. First three interesting variations there, and what I think is a mistake that ends up sounding cool. He said in a couple of interviews for this album that he didn't go back and fix a lot of things that were accidentals. He just kind of accepted them for what they are, a happy mistake, something he wasn't meant to play, something out of his control. And in measures 31, 32, 33, we have a bit of that. So I'm just going to play you the part I'm talking about. This is measure 32. Listen. I heard that on the radio, I thought, is that a mistake? What the hell is going on? And instead of going, he's going. He's doing the same thing one string down. So, from G12 to G10, and then D12. And he's completing the lick. So that's kind of a neat thing. You can chuck it in if you want. After that, verse 3 throws in some of this uh, variation on the pull-off lick. Going into the singing part. Verse 3 has an alternate guitar part for the singing portion of the measure, and it sounds like this. And what we end up doing is arpeggiating this G bar chord starting at the 10th fret of the A string and then barring with our third finger on D12, G12, and B12. And we kind of pick each of these individually. When we get to B12, we pull off to B10, and then go back down, G12, D12, before 
going back into the spirit of the lick. And ending off with a open G, open A, and then repeating. I'm using measures 37 and 38 as references for this, but every one of them is different. So you can uh, change that if you want. Live, he does not do this. So one more time, slow. Verse 3 with the alternate rhythm part also has some alternate overdubs. And if we just listen to the studio track... We're going to isolate the overdub track. They sound really nice together. So as guitar one is playing, if you have a guitar two in your band, he can be playing, or she can be playing. Or... So it's all on the tab. If you've got a second guitarist and you want to tackle this tune live, you can have him play that. Well, thank God you've been hanging on to your pick all this time, because verse 3 spawns a new guitar part, guitar 3, and it's doing some muted bubble picking. So this is the rhythm slow. repeat that. So we're fretting only two notes, E3 and A3. We're hitting that E3, one, two, three, then hitting the open G. Hitting the open G one more time, coming down to the A3, two on the open G, coming down to A2, and then open G and open D. And then we repeat that. One more time, slow. muted a bit. When I hear parts like that, I often like to do them up high if I'm playing that kind of... But you don't get that low G. And there's no video footage of the second or third guitar player playing that part, so I just went with the audio on this one. But my preference when I'm doing those parts is to play them up high in the neck. I'm not sure why. But uh, this is where it sounds like to me. Second chorus sounds like this. measure slow. The chorus 2 is measure 43 to 50. So measure 43 sounds like this. Similar to previous measures you've heard. One more time slow. Measure 44. Measure forty-five. Just make note of the uh, the high note here on the B B eight. Just throw the slide. Measure 46.
47. One more time slow. Measure 48. Some difference there, the very ending part. Measure 49. In the measure 50, the other guitarist takes over the rhythm part and John Mayer starts his pre solo. So let's look at measure 50 from the rhythm part point of view being played by the other guitarists because John likes to play the leads. So measure 50, the last of the rhythm part, sounds like this. And the only difference here is near the tail end of the lick we go to the G9 and then off on the G12 like that. So one more time. Just like that. And now it's time for the solo. Solo measures 50 to 58. actually starts a bit earlier in measure 49 because the guitarist that's been doing the overdubs in the chorus the very last thing he plays in measure 49 is and with this vibrating note sounding into measure 50 John Mayer live would take over with that ringing note and he'd play something like this so that's measure 50 and that really starts the solo. The solo itself, I, I would say, would start on 51, but there's almost two measures of little things leading up to that. So you can do whatever you want with it, but Guitar 2 played this in 49. And then Mayer is taking over the lead stuff. The other guitarist has switched over to, the, to his rhythm part. And he plays... I'll play it all slow. And that's the solo slow. So let's look at some of those little parts in there. I like this one. So with my second finger, I'm on D15, and I'm hammering on to D16. Then my first finger is there to do the G14. And then I just kind of shift my first finger up to D14 and do a hammer on pull off from D14 to D15. And then we sound the D12, so it's... After that, we have this really neat... So that is on A14. We kind of bar those two notes here. A14, D14. Slide down from the A14 to the A12. And then take our third finger pop it up to the E12 and start this run. One more time. 
So some of these are pretty quick slides and they make the rhythm work and fit. So really slow. I'll talk you through it. E12, A10. Then we're going to do a slide from A12 to A14. Then we're going to fret D12. And then we're going to skip down to G12. And then we're going to do one of those fast slides from G14 to 16. Then with our second, I did that slide with my third finger. My second finger is going to hit B15. First finger is going to hit the high E12. And then I'm going to slide up really quickly from that high E12 to the high E15. So it's very economical with the fingering, starting with the third finger here. Oops. So it's these little slides that make it work. Don't do this. You see how the rhythm doesn't work? These are quick slides. Grace note slides. Grace note slides as I call them. At this point it's a couple bends. So they're pre-bends. So when it's up in the air, it's pre-bent. You bend it down. Between measure 55 and 56, there's a neat double bend. That's coming off the, the high E here. 12th fret. Pre-bend on G14 down to G12, and then B15, then we're fretting B15 with our pinky and our third finger is on G14, and we're going to bend G14 and sound B15 at the same time, and then end off with the uh, G12. Typical country lick here, we're going to pre, we're going to bend G14 up. Hit the high E12, go back to that G14, bend it back down, and then it ends off with a... I don't think there's a slide there, but I put one in because it sounds nice. One thing I've noticed other guys on YouTube doing this song that drove me a bit crazy was... People wanting to do that lick down here. Now that's a great spot for country licks. But that is not one of them. And the giveaway is this one. That kind of look, you can't do that. I mean, you can, but it sucks. <laughs> so he's pretty much sticking all around this 12th fret position for the solo. There's another alternate guitar part in the solo that's played by guitar two, and it's a muted rhythmic thing. It sounds like this. two, there's a part A, part B. Part A is just played the first time in measure 50, and then part B is repeated for the rest of it. And what we're doing is this. That's part A. Part B is this. And then that part's repeated. What we're doing is we're fretting with our pinky A10 and then D9 and we're muted plucking that so we we do one like that and then we have two muted kind of plucks in between so a palm muted chord two chunks one palm muted chord one more chunk and then we're changing the chord a bit we're actually going to lift off our third finger and finger the D7 with our first finger. So we're going from 10-9 to 10-7 in this, this manner. When we get there, we're going to take our pinky and we're going to bar it on the 10th fret. We're going to hit those two top notes. We're going to kind of walk up with the 
A9 and the A10. So from the top. So this part. And then we go to the E8 and the A10, we alternate. And then a muted chunk in there. So slow that part A is. and then a timekeeping chunk. Part B sounds like this. Same beginning. Like that. So it's much more simpler and this is the part that repeats. So one more time. And it's just that run up part. We pause a bit. Add another note and then another little chunk to keep us on beat. And you get this kind of thing. And then part A was. Someone's gonna paint you another sky. After the solo, we're into verse 4, which is similar to verse 3, so I'm not going to get into that. The tab is all there. You can learn the intricacies if you wish. And then after that, we have a little bit of turnaround going into chorus 3, and that is this part. We're going into the chorus. And what's going on there is it's a nice little slide into a harmonic break. So on G11, we're just going to slide to G12. I'll use my, my third finger for this, and when I'm sliding up, I'm ready, I'm in a position to bar the harmonic node. So that's just right over the 12th fret, and you lightly touch it and pull away. So we're not fretting it for those people not into harmonics. We're not doing this. <laughs> Instead of fretting, we're going up a bit higher, right on the fret itself, right on the metal part, lightly touching it. I'm using the top three strings, the G, the B, and the E, and I'm lightly touching, and then I pull away to get that, so it's like this. Some nice sounds. I swear live he's doing this. <laughs> he doesn't even do that little, little, uh... And after that, we have a C chord down at the nut, and then a G for going into the chorus. The studio version of Chorus 3 I'm not going to cover. It's very similar to the Chorus 2, as well as the outro. So bars 67 to 74 are the final chorus in the studio version, and then the outro is an instrumental chorus, and that takes us bar 75 to bar 79, and then the song's over. There is quite a bit of neat little soloing from Guitar 2. Was it just too far to fall? In chorus number 3. So I've noted it all, but uh, it's just in the tab. I'm not going to show you. Instead, we're going to look right into the live version, which uh, I think is a superior ending, and we'll concentrate our efforts on that. Live solo, I'm going to be doing the live on Letterman version. Fantastic ending, fantastic outro. So let's look at it measure by measure. This is measure 83 to 85, slow. Very similar to the studio one in the beginning. We've seen that. Everything else is straightforward except, I guess, the uh, ending where you have this little rake. It's an 80, 85. So what you want to do there is almost fret like an, um, uh, a D5 chord. That's the D, the octave of the D, and the fifth in the middle. And then really concentrate your pinky on that 15th fret of the B. Take your thumb. Just like that. I believe Mayer just mutes everything with the first finger. Very good at raking. So that's pretty much it. Let's do that again slow. Measures 
86 and 87 slow. So in this first measure, 86, there's a bit of a playing behind the beat that happens. Here. So if you can slow that down a bit near the end, it's a very nice effect. And then in measure 87, we have this rake. Followed by a bunch of pull-offs. So the rake is on the 12th fret. We can just bar that with our first finger. And with our thumb, kind of mute up at first. Then when you get to this part, press down on the B12 and e, high E12 to get them sounding out. And then the first pull-off is from B15 to 13 to 12. And then we hit the G14 here. Then our next pull-off is from high E15 to 12. We hit the G14 again. Hit the high E12. And then a quick pull-off, grace note pull-off, from B15 to 12. So slow. One more time, slow. I'll talk you through it one more time. So the first pull off is a three note from B15 to 13 to 12, hitting that G14. Then we have a pull off from high E15 to 12. Back to the G14, to the high E12, and then our last pull-off, grace note, grace note pull-off, very fast, from B15 to B12. Measures 88 and 89 have a lot of two-note stuff in it. So let's look at it slow, measure 88 to 89. So off the top, we have this really neat... I just think it's a really neat uh, lick. It's almost ugly like a bulldog. After that, we have this... And that's when we get into the two-note stuff. So the very last note of uh, 88 is A14 and D14. Like that. Let's try 88 from the top again. We're going to go A14 by itself, and then A14 and D14. And that brings us to measure 89. 89 continues that off. We have the D12. Let's, let's play that slow. So we're starting off at D12, hit that single, and then with our thumb we're going to play A14. Then we're going to hit D12 and G12 together. So you kind of keep your hand, your first finger on the 12th fret, and then your third finger is going to handle all the stuff on the uh, subsequent frets. So from the top again, 89. Then we're going to go back with our third finger to A14. Then we're going to bar A14 and D14. We're going to lift off and strike D12 and G12. Hit D12 by itself, third finger is going to be on A14, we're going to go back to D12 and G12, then we're going to go to D14, and we have this nice, so what we're doing there is with our first finger we're barring G12 and B12, our second finger is on B13, and we're going to just hit those two notes the G string and the B string, then we're going to pull off from the B13 to the B12. We're going to hit that D12 that we're also barring. And then with our third finger and pinky, we're going to put it on G14 and B15. So slow, 89. And from the top.
It's amazing that he comes up with this stuff at 80 miles an hour. <laughs> Measures 19 and 91. Appreciate board. Very nice little movement here. So that's just barring the D12, G12. With our pinky and our third finger, we're going between high E 15 and 14. I believe it's a slide. And then we're barring with the pinky again on B15. So this is into measure 91, we have this bend going down to B uh, B12, followed by a slide from G16. So this is the same note, B12, G16, but we're going to slide down to G14. So it goes like this. And then that ends off the lick. So slow from the top. At the very tail end of the lick, there's a bit of a slide up into the next part. Measures 92 to 95 feature a lot of nice two note slide stuff, so let's take a look at that slow. top we're doing this this is the shape there's two of them so our second finger is on G16 first finger is on high E15 so that's the first shape and then the second shape is a stacked one the fingers are on top of each other we have the second finger on G17 and then the third finger on high E17 And that shape can stay the same as it slides up two frets. So from the top, that's what we have happening there. So the initial one, and then we slide up from the 17th fret to the 19th. Then we do that original first shape we ran into before, but this time it is on 19, sorry, 20 and 21. And then coming back down, 17, and there's a little slide from 16 to 17. And you, you, you slide with the same shape. Ordinarily you would slide from the previous shape, but it's not easy and he doesn't do it. So he just stacks that. G16, and then high E16, slide it up into the 17. Back to the first shape with the uh, first finger on the 15th fret, second finger on the 16th of the G. So let's do that slow. After that we have this. And then back into the lick. Into the, uh, the next part of the song. So one more time in its entirety. Nothing special about that bend. We start off on the G14, high E12, B15, pre bend on the G14 to the G12, D14, and then back to the G12, and then right into the lick. And that, my friends, is the live solo. Someone's gonna paint you another.
Measure 96 on my tab shows the second live turnaround, and that's when he does this. Raises his hands up, and then he does this neat thing around this chord, and it sounds like this. I'll play it slow. And it's a really neat thing to throw in there like that. So the chord is... We have D9, G7, and B8, and we're taking our thumb and first two fingers and assigning them each one of those strings. And the first seven things you do in this part are this. So the first thing we do is with our thumb and first two fingers, we pluck the chord in its entirety. Then we alternate between the high part of the chord, the first top strings, and then the low uh, D9. And then the high part, low D9 again. And then we bar our first finger on D7 and G7. And then we add our third finger to D9. That's the first part. After that, we're just uh, taking our pinky and we're going to lay it down on A9. So the second part of that goes like this. So there's an extra one. So it's that uh, D7, G7, a little rest, and then, and then A10, back and forth. And we end off with, and then our third finger on D9. So one more time slow. outro starts at measure 97 and this is a kind of funkified busier version of the instrumental chorus and uh, let's just play it slow measure 97 and 98 so there's a lot there's not a lot of waiting like like in the early version of the chorus. It's pretty busy. Constant notes, a lot of slaps. Let's do that one more time slow. One thing we're starting to see is the doubling up of notes. So instead of arpeggiating them like this, we're doing this. Same note twice. We're able to do that because of Mayer's picking style with his thumb and his first finger. It's really easy to alternate between the first finger and the thumb and double pick like that. So you'll see that in 97. Moving on to measure 99, we have this. And the measure after that. So that last measure had a, so we're going low, next note, and then back to the low note again for going to the high part. So that's, that's another interesting change. One more time. And that little slide part changes. It's like this. So picking the B8, and then a down. Uh, what do we call this? It's like a slap flick. Slide up and then pluck that B10. So, like that. If we're going into the next measure after that, we'll repeat that again. Measure 101 and 102.
open D there one more time. Finally measures 103 and 104 to end it off. Two last things, uh, three last things, are the beginning of another chord solo taking us out. Let's go back again, slow. So that part is nice, it's a bit of a change, uh, it's a nice arpeggiation. We have low, low again, and then the next note down with a slap, coming back with the B8, so it's a nice cascading climbing effect. Now we have an open E before we go back to that G9 here. So that's a departure as well. You almost never see that. And then we play out the rest of the chord. One more time slow. And then measure 104. ends off the outro thingy in the live version. I try to think of that outro as uh, an instrumental chorus but a very funkified, jazzed up version of it. Constant 16th notes, really busy. From measure 97 on during the live outro, the second guitar is playing this kind of melody. You can repeat that if you want, if you're working with a second guitarist. Uh, pretty simple, it's doubling the keyboard line. Starting at measure 105, we have this fantastic solo that's taking us out of the song. So it starts a bit on measure 104, and the last bit of measure 104 is like that, where a lot of this involves barring first finger on the 7th fret from D, G, and B7. So the last three bits of measure 104 are... So it's plucking all three of these strings and then our pinky on the A10. And now we're getting into measure 105. And slow, that's like this. slow measure at 105 so as we're plucking these we've got, I've got my thumb and my first two fingers cinched in under these three strings that we're going to be plucking pluck them then we pluck the open D between those once more open D again and then um, one more time and we do a little pull off chord and the chord we're fretting from is returning this chord into this one Fretting of that one is D9, G7, and B8. We just pull off all those notes. Actually, we're just pulling off from D9 to D7. We're plucking that after that on its own, D7. Then we go back to that uh, chord snatch, a rest in between, that hammer on version of the chord. Then we shift our finger, our hand down three strings, and we're going to be hitting these notes. That's the high part of the chord. And then with our pinky, the B10, and then open A. One more time, slow measure, 105. And then the next measure after that continues. So we continue off with that, this is measure 106, that bar chord, open D, bar chord again, or 
Then the uh, hammer on part portion of the chord. And then we have this nice little rundown from high E10 to 8, and then B10. We hit the D7, and then we do that hammer on, and then pluck the hammered on chord. And then we throw a rest in there. There's just 107 and 108 sound like this. Beautiful thing in 107. So we're barring again on the 7th fret down. We're plucking with our thumb and first finger D7 and B7 at the same time. And then we're hitting the G7 in the middle. And then we're finally terminating on the D7 again. So it's both together, G7, D7. We're hitting a D7 and a G9, and then we're uh, with our second finger hitting a B8. We're plucking the B8 and the D7 at the same time, and then we're ending on that same chord again, the D7, D9. So the first part of that. Then we're doing a little hammer-on from D7 to D9, and then we're plucking two notes, D7, G7, and a little bit of a slap, and we're hitting the A10. So one more time, that whole measure slow. Then we go to the next measure after that. Pretty interesting little lick here. So the A10, their pinky, and we're snatching those two notes here in the seventh fret, two middle strings, D7 and G7. Back to the A10, A10, and we are doing a hammer-on from D7 to D9. So like that. And there's a bit of a rhythmic hit on the A string, and then we sound the uh, the 10 we start all over again. This time we go low. We go A7 to A10, and then those two notes, and then two hits on the A10. Let's do that slow from the top. It's a it's pretty neat lick. Measure 109 and 110. So that carries on from that previous motif, and I should add that this is slightly palm muted. So measure 109. Straightforward enough. This part is tricky. There's a bit of a rest in the next measure, and then we start in on... It ends off very strange. So starting on that rest, we go to the 10th fret of the A. We do a double hammer on here. We're fretting D7 and G7. We do a hammer on pull off to D9. Come back to the A10. Slide everything down a string, strike the G7, pull off from G9 to G7, and we hit the D10, two notes on the G7. We do another double hammer on where we were before, ending off on A10, and then that two note chord here, A10, A7, and then we end off with a G9 to G7. One more time slow for that complicated measure. Start on a rest. Then 
Measures 111 and 112. <laughs> Off of that familiar bar, we hit that, and we have this neat trill. So that's on D10, D9, D10, D9, like that. Then we're hitting G7, and then G7 and D7 together, these two notes in the middle. There's two percussive slaps on the guitar before hitting those same two notes again. We have a Slap on the low E that doesn't sound any notes, just percussion. And then we shift up a string and we have A7 and D7 and we do this together. And then pinky on A10. And then we go back down to those two middle strings. We do a hammer on from D7 to D9. And then we end off on D7 in the next beginning of the next measure. And then we end off with just those chords. So that's that bar chord, and then the uh, hammered on portion, and then the bar chord by itself. So, and then the last thing is a little hammer on, two note hammer on. So that's from our barred D7 and G7, and we're hammering on to G9. And we hold that like that. One more time, slow the whole thing. Measures 113 and 114. So that familiar two-note chord on D7 and G7, we let that ring. Then we're going to do that that other chord and a reverse pull off out of it into that. So it's like this. So that chord that we're pulling off from is that one. Pull off from it, and then we terminate with this two-note chord. So that's a D7, G9. So from the top, and that's a little bit of percussive slap, and then we do these two-note plucks here. So it's G7 and B7. G7 and D9, and then G7 and D7. Then we do single notes, we're in the next measure here now, D9. And we do this slide, and the slides are all done with the first finger. So regardless of where your first finger is, take it off, get it up there, and do the slide. So, now we're at A10. A7, and there's two pumps then on the A10, sliding back up from the 7 to the 9, and then right back down again, A10, A7, and then start where you began, those two chords. Slow one more time. So just keep in mind these slides. You're always, they're always done with the first finger. So wherever it is, pull it out. Like that. Measures 115 and 116. With that last two note chord ringing out, we continue like this. Very similar to the last one. Except this time we're plucking three notes instead of the two before. So that's D7, G9, B7. And then these single notes. And then this kind of rhythm in the next measure. And then two notes, the D7, D9. Sorry, D7, G9. And then the G9 by itself. And then we start this nice, which uh, follows in the next measure. So what we're doing there is simply 
hammering on from B7 to B9, then hitting high E10 by itself, letting it die, and then pulling off from high E8 to 7. So one more time, slow. Measures 117 and 118, continue that cascading like we began in the last measure. So we're starting off on high E7, we're hitting B10, and then a series of pull-offs from B8 to B7. And it's probably easier just to go through the tab and, and kind of get all this down instead of me calling out all the numbers. I'll just go through it slow, both those two measures, one more time. Now that ending part, as we start to ride up the B string, the first one's a pull-off. After that, B10, we give it some vibrato, and we actually slide back down to B8. It sounds a lot like pull-offs, but it's actually slid. The first one's a pull-off. Everything after that is pulled back, ending off on B12. There's just 119 and 120. Measure 119 starts off with this note hanging in the air. This is the B12 from the last measure. Let's just play through those two slow. So that's carrying on from that previous measure where we were doing this. And we don't um, slide down with all of them, but we do for the majority of them. So let's concentrate on number 119 for now. So we're just doing the B12, sliding down to B10, going back up to B15, sliding back to B12. After that, we hit high E14, let that hang in there for a little bit. Then we go to 15, and then back to 12, and these are all picked. And then when we go to 17, we get back to the sliding down thing where we go from 17 and we slide down to 14. And then the highest we get in this is fret 19. And then we do this descending lick. And what that is, we do a pull off. We're at 19, 19th fret on high E. We do a pull off from high E 17 to 15. And then we hit the 14th fret, 15th fret on the B string. And then we do a slide, pull off slide, from G14 to 12, slide to 11. And we'll hit the D12. And then we'll do a similar thing on a 12, 10, and 9. So all together, So from the high part, and the whole thing slow, and that is the end of the outro solo. We're going into the final chord solo ending. Measures 121 to 127 end off the live version of the piece, and it's just going through these chords found in the chorus. And he throws in.
in these high comps here, these fifth chords. This is a D5 and an E5. The reason we call them fifth chords is it's the octave. D here, D here, and a fifth in the middle. One, two, three, four, five. So let's go through that. We know the chords are ready. It's a B minor seventh with a fifth. It's the C6. Same shape, two frets up, as the D6. And there's our modified E minor. The low E, A string muted. First finger on D9, pinky fretting G12 and B12. And in between these chord changes, there's a percussive slap, like that. So let's run through it. starts the same, coming up, slap, and it's a face slap, which is basically deadening the chord before we move the next one. And when he starts throwing these little high comps in here, the very first one is just on the tail end of the beat, it kind of goes up here. We have our first finger on G12, second finger on G14, third finger on B15. That's the first one. Start it all over again. Then we do two in quick succession. That's the uh, same shape we just did with our root note on the D12. Shift it up two frets to D14. Same shape. And then pull it all down. And we're coming up one more time. And that is, uh, we're just rushing it. We're treating that last E minor as one of these comping chords. And we hang on this last one, this E5, a bit longer, shake it a bit, and then we're coming up almost for the last time, but we don't complete. We just hang out on that D5. And that's pretty much it. Uh, one more time. enjoyed that. This is a tough song. took a long time. Grand Theft Auto 5 really interfered in this. So <laughs> I should be uh, back to my quicker schedule after this. Hope you enjoyed it.